This video is going to be a complete guide on how I painted this Mandalorian statue. I 3D printed this model on a resin printer, but I'm not really going to focus on that in this video. My main priority here is showing you guys how I got this paint job. Throughout this video I will list every single paint that I used in this project by name, and links to everything will be down in the description. Thank you so much for clicking on this video, I hope you stick around. This video is primarily going to be how I painted this model, but first I want to touch on what the actual model is and where I found it. This model is a 3D printable file from the Star Wars 3D Models Patreon. If you're interested in Star Wars 3D printing, and especially if you have a resin printer, I highly recommend you join the Star Wars 3D Models Patreon. This Mandalorian sculpture is a 1 6th scale, and it can be found in their welcome pack. The first month you join, you get their entire welcome pack, which includes 35 models, and also any model from that current month. Their monthly membership is only $10 a month, and you get so much more than that in value. With that out of the way, I want to touch on all the paints that I used in this project. Now, I'm not some mini or sculpture painting expert, so I don't have a ton, but I don't feel like I needed a whole lot either. Other than a few rattle cans that I used to base coat these pieces, every single color that I use in this video came from one of these five kits. Four of them are Vallejo paint kits, and one of them is just a basic cheap acrylic paint set. I will have links to all these paints and the Patreon down in the description. As a base coat on the Mandalorian himself, I used a basic black spray paint. Now, I used Rust-Oleum's Sandable Primer, but it ended up being really dusty and clumpy, so for such a small model like this, I recommend the paint that I put on your screen. That Rust-Oleum 2X Ultra Cover Premium Ultra Matte Black comes out really nice. For the actual base stand for this Mandalorian sculpture, I base coated that with kind of just a mixture of some paints that I had on hand. I was looking for sort of a light, sandy, dirt color, and I wanted some variance in it. I've put those paints on your screen, but you by no means need to follow this. These are just what I had on hand. Off camera, I base coated the Stormtrooper helmets in a Rust-Oleum white, and the spiky rock looking parts of the base in that same Rust-Oleum satin espresso that I'd used before. I start off here with an airbrush, but you by no means need to use an airbrush to do this. I could have easily dry brushed this part. I started off with this light brown color from the Vallejo face and skin color set, and just tried to airbrush it onto all the highlights to give them some dimension. My goal in starting to work on this base was just to add a whole bunch of different dirt type colors to give it as much variance as I could. You can do this any way you like, but you definitely don't want to just stick to one or two colors for that natural look. Dirt, sand, and rocks have hundreds of thousands of different colors in them, so I was just trying to layer up a few different colors to give it some natural variance. The next color I chose was the Dark Earth from the Vallejo Building Colors set. But instead of using my airbrush, this time I dip a brush in it, slightly dry it off, and I just go around dabbing all over this base. I was really trying to focus on the recessed areas. While the base was drying, I got distracted and used that same color and started weathering up the Stormtrooper helmets a little bit. I decided to do this because I already had that paint out and just thought why not, but really I should have painted on all the actual Stormtrooper details before doing any weathering. Speaking of those Stormtrooper helmet details, I took the black paint out of that Vallejo building color set, put a few drops in a cup, got the smallest brush that I could, and started hand painting on the Stormtrooper details that required black, such as the eyes, mouth grill, the eyebrows, and the little chin piece. For those little vents on the side of the Stormtrooper helmets, I went with a Carillion Blue from the acrylic set, and I didn't have a brush this fine, so what I ended up doing was using a toothpick and slowly scraping that paint into the little vent recesses. I had to be super careful, it took a ton of work, and later on in this process when I go to do a black wash, I totally filled those in way too much anyway, but hey, it looked good for a few minutes. For the next part of the Stormtrooper helmets, I used the bottle of aluminum paint from the Vallejo Metallic set. These paints are designed to be airbrushed, but once again I'm just taking a fine little brush, dipping it in the paint, and brushing this paint straight on. I very carefully got the ears, the cheeks, the metallic parts of the little mouth vent, and even put some up by the temples in the back. Next, I went back to the rocks from the base. I squeezed a little bit of raw sienna in a cup, and I'm just going to dry brush it along all the highlights of these rocks. Now for dry brushing, you just want to take that paintbrush, saturate it in the paint, and then go off on a paper towel or a piece of paper or something else, and dab away nearly all of the paint. Then with light sweeping motions, you're just going to let the end of the paint bristles brush along all the raised edges of that model. Next, I took the black paint out of the acrylic paint set and watered it down a bit to do some black washing. I ended up overdoing this a little bit more than I wanted to, but the idea is just to take some wet black paint, get it on your model, and then take a wet rag and wipe off everything that you can, and this will leave that black paint in all the little recesses, creating shadows, depth, and even weathering. For a model this small, I sometimes need to use a Q-tip instead of that rag. 
Then to give those Stormtrooper helmets the dirt and grime they really needed, I unevenly mixed raw umber and raw sienna to give some variance in the color. And I did what was sort of a dry bushing on these helmets. And at the end, they ended up looking really nice. Now let's move on to the cape. To start the cape, I reached into my acrylic paints and mixed gray and black. Don't be afraid if this is a little bit dark because we are gonna dry brush a lighter gray later on. This coat is pretty basic. I'm just trying to cover the entire surface. Next, I wanted to move on to the Mandalorian's actual flight suit. Out of my acrylic paint set, I started mixing black, gray, and a little bit of the raw umber. Once again, I'm just trying to get full coverage to give me a good base layer. After I was done with that layer, in the same paint cup, I added a bit more of the raw umber to give it more of a brownish feel, and then I dry brushed that all over the flight suit, and it really brought out that texture. Now you of course could have printed this model on an FDM printer, but I went with resin because this model has such incredible textures on it. Doing a simple dry brushing like this can really bring out that texture and make it look so much more realistic. Now I was moving on to the leather goods. I believe for my base layer of the leather goods, I start off with raw sienna from the acrylic set. I didn't mask anything, I was just super careful. I used both a small brush for like the edges and the corners where I didn't want to accidentally overpaint, and then also a larger brush for areas in the middle where I wasn't worried about overpainting, but that larger brush helped me move a lot faster. Next, I added a few drops of light gray and mahogany from the Vallejo building color set, but then felt like I wanted to be less saturated and darker, so added some of the gray from the acrylic set and some black from the acrylic set. And then eventually wanted to bring a little more of the brown back in, so I added some raw umber also from the acrylic set. It mixed all those together to do the top part of the boots, kind of where the laces would normally go. Once I had the top part of the boots painted, I also realized that the area on the left ankle underneath that leather piece also needed some of the same color. After that, in the same paint cup, I took some more gray from the acrylic set to lighten it up a little bit and went over the areas on top of the boots where the laces would be one more time. I then took that same color and covered the entire right ankle and up the calf. After that, I mixed gray and black and painted the little abdomen protector piece, as well as the attachment that goes on his right calf just below his knee. In the same paint cup, I added some white to really lighten it up. And then using a fine brush, I painted that onto the little armor piece that protects the inside of his ankle. I then used the same color mixture to paint his hand armor on both hands. After that, I wanted to dry brush the highlights for all my gray areas. For this, I used the Vallejo light gray from the building color set. The main areas that I focused on were both ankles, the entire right lower leg, parts of the lower left leg, and I even dry brushed this onto the highlights of the cape as well. A couple of more tips for dry brushing highlights. First, I definitely recommend a stiff dry brush. This keeps the bristles nice and firm and allows you to get that scraping paint highlight effect that you're looking for. Also, when you're highlighting certain wrinkles, don't go along them, go against them. This way it highlights the highest part of the wrinkle and really helps create that contrast and give the piece so much more depth. Now the next step I'm gonna do is aging my leather and really using some wetter, more orange paint to get into the cracks, crevices, and creases to really give it some depth, age, and authenticity. You can see here that I was going to mask all my leather pieces. I ended up deciding that was just too much work for what it was worth, and so I only masked the right foot. I believe for this step, I'm using the dark brown from the Vallejo Building Colors paint set. I really enjoyed using the Vallejo color for this because they're already so thinned down. The goal here is just to take a little bit of that paint, get it on my brush, and dip, scrape, and dab it into all the little cracks and crevices. And then I was just using an old t-shirt to wipe that layer off of some of the highlights. It's kind of like doing a wash. I then darkened up my leather wash with some of the mahogany color from the Vallejo Building Colors paint set. And I went around all the leather pieces doing that step again. I made sure to keep this wash from touching any of the highlights to really help create that leather contrast. Then for my highlights on all the leather goods, I put some raw sienna acrylic in a cup 
and once again used my stiff bristle brush to dry brush all the highlighted areas for all the leather. This really created a super nice looking leather effect. Using the black paint out of the acrylic set and a very fine brush, I painted the soles of both boots. Using some light brown from the Vallejo face and skin set mixed with some interior green from the Vallejo building color set, I created a mixture to use for the inside part of the top part of the boot. I could notice that a little area inside of it right above the laces was a slightly greener color than everything else. Next, I wanted to dry brush all the highlights to the entire flight suit. For this, I mixed the acrylic colors gray and raw sienna. This created a nice desaturated look that I could use my bristle brush to just highlight all the outer surfaces, wrinkles, and texture of his entire flight suit. I did a very light black wash on any areas that I felt needed a little bit more shadows on the entire Mandalorian model. Next, I used acrylic colors and mixed Corellian blue and gray to create a color to paint on his hip and tailbone armor. In my opinion, my first layer of this was a little bit too blue, but later on, I just grayed it up and painted over it again. To paint the Mandalorian's fingertips, I used the acrylic color Yellow Ochre. This was another instance where I didn't mask anything, I just used the smallest brush I could find. I should note, if you ever have a brush that's small, but not small enough, you can always use a pair of scissors and cut an angle at the tip creating part of the brush that's extremely fine, allowing you to get into all the little details that you need to. For the triangles on the top of the Mandalorian's hand armor, I reached into my acrylic set and got out cobalt blue. I do think this color works pretty well. Sometimes acrylic paints dry pretty thin, so I used some more yellow and did another layer on the fingertips. Then I started painting the blaster. The first part that I painted was the handle. To get the wood look that I wanted for the handle, I mixed two Vallejo colors, wood from the metallic effects set and mahogany from the building color set. I would eventually add some wet streaks of just the mahogany paint to try and mimic a wood grain type look. For the base color of the blaster itself, I believed I used the steel color from the Vallejo metallic effects set, and I would go back through on it with a second layer and darken it up with some gunmetal from the same set. I wanted to go over the entire Mandalorian sculpture and paint all the metallic pieces. My color choice here was chrome from the Vallejo metallic effects set. I simply put some in a tray and used the finest brush I could find and slowly carefully went around to every single area with metallic all over the entire piece. I should mention that I did not hit any of the Beskar at this stage because I wanted to mask everything and paint that with an airbrush. If you don't have an airbrush, you could probably use the same paint on the Beskar at this stage and you get a pretty good effect. I wanted to glue his right foot on. My normal method for gluing stuff is a mixture of E6000, which is a slow but very strong acting glue, with something like CA glue, which is very fast acting glue. The CA glue helps hold everything in place while the E6000 sets. For the little bombs that the Mandalorian carries on his left hip, I used the color Signal Red out of the Vallejo Metallic Effects set. This paint comes out a little bit pink, but it has a very nice quality to it that almost makes it look like a light. It was time to start getting ready for the Beskar. I used painter's tape to mask off everything except for the Beskar armor. Now with a model this small, it's gonna be extremely difficult to get the tape to actually cover every single area. At this stage, get the tape as close as you can, and then I'll show you how we're gonna make our masking perfect in the next step. My secret to getting the perfect lines that I wanted was liquid mask. If you put it in one of these fine line applicator tips, you can squeeze the liquid latex exactly where you need it and get it into all the little areas that are really difficult to get to with tape. This allowed me to get perfect lines around all my Beskar armor. And one area that would have been extremely difficult without the liquid mask is the leather belt that goes across his chest. I simply went around all the edges making sure that my lines were super clean. This liquid mask comes out white but dries clear so you know when you're good. And if you're wondering why I didn't do the Beskar first and mask that to paint everything else, especially across his chest, that's because I generally don't like to do any masking over the top of metallic paints. Usually the paint fails. Other than sanding a couple of the pieces to help them fit together, I did essentially no smoothing on this 3D print. Because of that, once I had all this masked, I did decide to spray a little bit of this Dupla Color filler primer all over the armor pieces. 
This model has them kind of rough and looking like textured stone like a statue, and I wanted them to look a little bit smoother. This is definitely not a required step, just something I thought I'd do. Now that all the armor was gray, I needed to spray it black again. To keep the detail as nice as I could, I used the Vallejo black out of the airbrush, but you could absolutely use that same Rust-Oleum we used before. I just needed these pieces to get darkened up a bit. Before painting any metallics, you usually want to base coat it with a nice glossy color, usually glossy black. The Vallejo Building Colors model air set does come with a nice gloss varnish, but I kept having issues with my airbrush clogging. Because of that, I just decided to use the Rust-Oleum 2X Gloss Clear. It does work really well, and it worked perfectly for these pieces. I started off with a slightly light coat, and then my second and third coats were definitely wet coats to give it that nice gloss sheen. At first I was going to do some liquid mask on the T-Visor on the Mandalorian helmet so that the helmet would get the metallic and the visor wouldn't, but it ended up being just a little bit too difficult to use that liquid mask and get it in there the way that I wanted to, so I just decided to spray over the whole thing and then go back in later on and paint in that visor with a small brush. Now the color choice is so important with Beskar. Obviously the Alumiluster or even the All Clad would be the ideal paint, but they're a bit expensive and I don't own either one of those. I suppose since everything was masked really nicely at this stage, I could have done a graphite rub. But what I ended up going with is the chrome from the Vallejo Metallic Effects set. I probably laid it on a little bit too thick, but this chrome does look super good. You potentially could hand paint this on if you don't have an airbrush, but if you don't lay it on properly, you might have some of those brush strokes showing through in the paint. Metallics will show every little mistake. The armor piece on his right thigh has a layer of paint over the Beskar and it's all chipped off. I knew for this I was going to be putting some liquid mask on this paint, so I used this opportunity to test putting some clear gloss over that chrome metallic. I then used a couple of reference photos to just very carefully use that liquid mask and apply it everywhere where it was chipped off in the actual show. I also used Hot Toys and Sideshow Collectibles for reference as well. My color choice for the layer of paint over this Beskar was the black from the Metallic Effects set. It's not a flat black, it has a slight bit of sparkly sheen to it, but it's not exactly metallic either. I don't know what it was about it, I just thought it was the right choice for this. After this layer is done, I feel like his thigh piece is looking really good, and I feel like the rest of his armor is looking pretty good. So now it's time to do that really satisfying part of pulling off all the masking. And to be honest, on this model, it was a little bit less satisfying, and a little bit more just troublesome. This took me a very long time, but I'm super glad I used that liquid mask. It made getting all the edges so much easier. Then going back to the helmet, I used the bottle of black paint out of the Vallejo face and skin set, to go in there and manually paint that T-Visor with a small brush. This is another one of those jobs of just being super careful. I then very carefully went and tried to paint both details on the ears that are also black. Then I also wanted to paint the model black again just to make sure it looked good. Then to give that visor that nice reflective sheen that I knew it needed, I'm using the gloss varnish out of the Vallejo Building Colors paint set. I simply went in with another small brush and painted it on manually. Then switching over to the jetpack, I'm using the transparent blue and transparent red to give the bottom where the jetpack blast actually comes out some of those color changing effects that you get when metal is heated. According to Google, that's called thermochromism. Now when you're doing something like this, I recommend having a Q-tip or a wet rag nearby so that if you get a little bit too much on there, you can immediately wipe it off before it dries. I also used my finger a lot on this part just to help blend those colors. After mixing a little bit of the red and a little bit of the blue, I really think I got a good effect here. Now we move on to the reason why I included the Vallejo transparent color set. This step is totally optional, but for the flamethrower and the rocket boosters, I printed them in the Elegoo clear resin. This allowed me to use transparent paints on it and give it that sort of see-through look that makes it feel a lot less solid and blocky. I started off with a transparent yellow from the set, but to be honest, you should just skip the yellow entirely. Once I end up adding orange and red, the yellow pretty much doesn't make a difference at all. I then execute on what I thought was a brilliant idea to add some of the transparent blue to the very tip to give it that super hot flame look, and it just turned the tip green. I then added a little bit of the transparent orange, and that at this stage didn't really seem to have too much of an effect. I do add a bit more orange later on, and I do think it was a great idea. I probably should have started with orange instead of starting with yellow. I put the transparent red in my airbrush, and as I was spraying it on the paper towel to purge it, I was worried it was going to look super pink. But layering up that transparent red on top of that transparent orange ends up looking super good for flames. I also took some basic white paint and carefully painted that on the tip to cover up that area where I accidentally had gotten it green. There is of course a ton of artistic liberty that you can take when you're painting these rocket boosters and that flamethrower, 
but I decided that I wanted the bottom of that jetpack blast to look like smoke. So I wanted it to look like a beam of flame going right into the smoke. So of course for the puffy smoke, I didn't use transparent paints. I ended up base coating it using a brush with some of the Vallejo Gray Primer just to try to get some color down and define where the flames were gonna end and the cloud of smoke was gonna start. After that, I mixed up some of the black and gray Vallejo paints, put that in my airbrush, and spray that all over the jetpack smoke, just trying to define the shadows and really give those clouds of smoke some shape. Then, using the transparent orange first and the transparent red second, I lightly airbrushed over that jetpack stream one more time and slightly went down onto the clouds of that puffy smoke as well, just to try to make it look like some of the light from the fire might be showing through those clouds of smoke. My last step just to tie everything together for these jetpack blasts was to mix up a nice light gray in my airbrush and carefully spray that onto all the extruding areas of the jetpack smoke. I wanted to use this to basically highlight the smoke. Doing this really ended up giving that smoke a lot of depth and making it look super good in the end. Now I felt like it was about time to glue a bunch of this stuff together. Here I'm using my CA glue with the activator for that fast effect and my E6000 for that long-term strong bond. It would probably be really smart to glue certain pieces together and let those dry for a while before you just start gluing more together, but I glued everything together pretty much all in one sitting. I started by gluing the torso and the legs together, and then once I had that where I wanted it, I glued both arms in. I was trying to pay attention to where any gaps would appear and fill those with a little bit of extra glue to help cover it up. Now this particular model uses three separate cape pieces that all fit together, but I felt like the third one was a little bit too much, and I was having some issues getting it to slide into where it needed to sit. In fact, I was having enough issues with just these two pieces and getting them to fit together properly. I even broke out part of one of the resin pieces when I was trying to push them together. Luckily though, after gluing everything in, this break wasn't visible at all. While I had my glue out, I also glued the base pieces together, starting with the Stormtrooper helmets, and then those large pointy rocks. To give the base some more variance in color, I mixed the acrylic raw sienna and yellow ochre together and then just slightly dry brushed those all over the base. I wanted to give this base some super realistic looking sand, so for that I started with some Fuller's Earth. Now you absolutely don't need to buy this, I'm going to show you another way to do it here in a minute. But what I did is I took a couple of these and mixed them together, and then I basically took a brush and kind of just covered them over the base. This gives a nice effect and it gives dirt that's actually to scale for the model. The other thing that it did really well for this base was help all the pieces blend together. To really help the Fuller's Earth stay without just falling right off my model, I would spray a little bit of matte clear, and then even go in and add a little bit more Fuller's Earth as the clear coat was still wet, so it really helped seal it in there as it dried. Now here's another really budget-friendly way to do this. Seasoning. Just take some ground cinnamon, ground turmeric, and there's probably other good ones out there as well and just put a little bit of that on your model, either with a brush or even seasoning it from above and just making sure it lands in the correct areas. While I still had my Fuller's Earth and seasoning mix out, I decided that I wanted to use a little bit of it and brush it on the Mandalorian himself. This would give a really authentic dirt look to his boots and his pants, especially where the knees are, and really help make this model look so much more realistic. Then while I was weathering the Mandalorian, I wanted to add some sort of splattery mud and dirt spots. For this I'm using the toothbrush technique. I simply take some paint, in this case I was just using some raw sienna from the acrylic set, add a little bit of water to that paint, dip an old toothbrush in it, pull it back with your thumb and let it flick forward. When it does this it's going to spray all these little drops all over the model, and all over your room if you're not careful. I just went around making sure this was applying in areas that I actually wanted it to. In areas where I thought the spot was too big, I just dabbed it with a q-tip and that really helped blend it down. After I finished the Mandalorian himself, I decided to do a little bit of this on his cape as well. This meant it looked like his cape had maybe been dragging through some dirt or even some mud, or getting some splashes on it from his feet. I then went back to the Mandalorian because I felt like his knees weren't quite dirty enough. I used a little bit of this mud mixture that I had mixed up, and dabbed a bit on his knees to make it look like he'd been down in the dirt working on something, and some extra on his boots as well, and some of those other areas that I thought would have a little bit of extra dirt and mud on them. After all that weathering was done, I just needed to do the final assembly. Using that same mixture of E6000 and CA glue, I secured the jetpack, the flames coming out of his flamethrower, and the cape pieces as well. I ended up realizing that once you take his boot and stick it in the slot on the base, between his boot and the two jetpack streams of flames that go up into the actual jetpack itself, he actually stands up without glue on those pieces. And even when looking around at him or moving him a little bit, he didn't seem to fall over. 
So for now, just for ease of moving it later or whatever else I might need to do with this model, I decided not to glue those pieces. But of course you could glue the flames into both the base and the Mandalorian himself if you wanted to. Well, that is going to do it for this video, you guys. Thank you so much for making it all the way to the end. As always, I'll have links to everything used in this video down in the description. Consider subscribing if you got value out of this video. It would really help me out. Thank you so much again for watching this. I'll see you guys in the next one.